Hello and welcome to Las Vegas. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Sean from Miles to Memories and today we have a tour, a sad tour of Las Vegas. Who would have thought over nine months later there'd be so many still closed casinos? But here we are into 2021 and many casinos all around the Las Vegas Valley are still closed and we are going to see them all. Join me for this tour. If you like this video, please give it a like, thumbs up, Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and tell people about our videos. Don't forget to leave a comment as well. We love to discuss this stuff. Let us know which casino is the most surprising to you as we start our tour with the Palms. This is the area where Chaos Nightclub reigned supreme for less than a year. Following a massive renovation, they opened this brand new nightclub, which only lasted a year and put significant strain on the property. Then in March, they closed indefinitely. Now, the Palms opened in 2001, owned by the Maloof family. It was expanded in 2005 with the $600 million Fantasy Tower, but unfortunately, the Maloof family lost almost all of their stake in the property through financial difficulties and the Great Recession, and they were only 2% owners when Station Casinos came in to buy the property in 2016. They then spent $620 million to renovate it all the way through 2019, and it sits closed to this day. This is probably one of the biggest mysteries as to the closed casinos considering how much money they spent, but we do know the renovations weren't a huge success. They said at the time when they suddenly closed Chaos Nightclub in November of 2019, while Palms has experienced exceptional growth across both the gaming and non-gaming segments of the business, the expense side of the business has been challenging to date due in large part to the entertainment and fixed cost structure associated with Chaos. And they also opened tons of new restaurants as part of this expansion, and you can see some of them right here. It's a shame to see these brand new venues sit empty, including Tim Ho Wan and so many others. Now, Palm's Place is still open. That's the condo tower that was built. And so there are people around and they do let you walk around here a bit, but unfortunately, not much to see. Tim Ho Wan does have a look into the casino. The glass is not covered like in many other areas. The TVs are on and the machines are on. I know it's a little hard to see, but everything was on inside. That was a bit of a surprise considering this property has been closed for more than nine months. If you like pictures of casino and boarded up doors, this is the place for you. Now let's walk around a little bit and check out the front entrance of the Palms. I don't know about you, but that middle plant makes all the difference, makes it look so nice. Just kidding, of course, so sad for this casino, for all of its employees, and it is definitely the most beautiful of the casinos, still shuttered, still closed as of 2021 with no opening date set. The Palms is a big surprise. Let me know what you think about this stunning casino, fully renovated, $600 million spent just a couple years ago, and now it sits closed. When will this place reopen? What do you think? Let me know. But let's head on to North Las Vegas. This is the Fiesta Rancho, which is owned by Red Rock Resorts or Station Casinos, as it used to be known. And this has a tie into the Palms, of course, because it was built by the Maloof family, the same Maloof family that owned the Palms. And this was one of the first casinos to ever test coinless gaming back in 2000. And that's exactly when Station Casinos bought it in the year 2000 from the Maloof family, who then used a lot of those funds to build the Palms. 
One interesting thing about Fiesta Rancho is its slogan. It used to be known as the Royal Flush Capital of the World. That slogan was used a lot in the early 2000s, and it was brought back even later. They're famous for their Sports on the Run sports book, which I don't believe is open anymore, even in normal times. And just across the street is Texas Station. This casino is really interesting. It's owned by Red Rock Resorts or Station Casinos, the same owner as the Fiesta. But it was built in 1995, opened about a year after Fiesta Rancho. And it was built by Frank Fertitta Jr., who is the founder of Station Casinos. Although he built the property on his own and then sold it to his former company, Station Casinos, for $95 million before it ever opened. So I don't know what the backstory is there, but I assume that it was sort of in the works for a long time. The resort's exterior is designed to resemble an 1890s government architectural style common in Texas, while the interior of the casino is designed to replicate the San Antonio Riverwalk. And there are some water elements inside, but outside I love some of these Texas theming elements, including this oil derrick, and you have some other interesting things we'll see along the way. I did walk onto the property to get a look at the front entrance. Other properties had no problem with this, but very quickly after I started filming, a security guard rolled up on me with his weapon and just told me to leave, so I did. But notice this Texas Station sign on the garage. I thought that was beautiful in the shape of Texas. Now we're downtown Las Vegas, and that is Circa. The hotel is now open. All of Circa is now open. Unfortunately, just across the street, Main Street Station remains closed. This property is no stranger to being closed. It opened in 1978 as the Holiday International, and it was a Holiday Inn. Unfortunately, it didn't have great success, and it closed in 1984 and remained shuttered all the way through 1987 when it reopened as the Park Hotel and Casino. Unfortunately, the Park Hotel and Casino also failed and closed again in 1990 when it was redeveloped again in 1991 to Main Street Station. And guess what? It failed and closed yet again. Boyd Gaming, who currently owns the property, bought it in 1993 and spent about $45 million to reopen it in 1996. And it has been open ever since, but of course, now it is closed indefinitely. And you see that site with the tent and those orange things there, that is where they're doing Hawaii COVID testing. So if Hawaiians come to visit the California, they're able to go get their COVID testing so they can return home right there in the Main Street Station parking lot. That's all it's being used for today. Now we are flying out to Prim, Nevada. This is the state line of California and Nevada, about 30 to 40 minutes from the Las Vegas Strip. This is Buffalo Bills, famous for its roller coaster and its theme. Unfortunately, it is now closed. And uh, we covered this, this film is from the summer, but check out our whole video. We did an entire video about this closed property out in Prim, Nevada. It's very interesting and sad to see it still closed going into 2021. And so is the Colorado Bell down in Laughlin. This is another property that closed in March indefinitely at the beginning of COVID and it still has no reopening date set. If you've watched the channel, you watch my Laughlin videos, I highly recommend those, but you know that I, really enjoy the Colorado Bell. I love the architecture and I'm really sad to see this property closed, although admittedly it wasn't in the best shape. Hopefully it will get some love and reopen at some point. Now to a casino that's fairly new, only about 10 years old, the East Side Cannery down on Boulder Highway. This is a strip of casinos that has had amazing gaming revenue through the reopening of COVID, but Boyd Gaming, who also owns this property, has kept it closed, and uh, we have no reopening date set, unfortunately. 
Boyd purchased this property in 2016 from Cannery Resorts, and we don't know quite what's gonna happen, but it is a nice looking property. I love the look of the tower. I really like this property. I think it stands out among the properties on Boulder Highway. Boyd Gaming also owns Sam's Town, which is almost next door, just a couple blocks away from here, and that is open. Thankfully on my visit, I was able to go really close to the main entrance. You'll see in this shot a golf cart and also a security truck. And I was wondering where security was. As I walk through, I always try to stay a little bit away from the entrance so they don't think I'm gonna try to break in or go inside. But what happened here is I was filming and then I looked into that valet window and there the security guard was just staring at me <laughs> and I waved to him, he waved at me and I went about my way. Much nicer than the security guard at Texas Station who pulled up on me with a weapon, even though I was about 40 feet away from the building, but you know, you can't win them all. Eastside Cannery, still closed for 2021. When will it open? We simply do not know. Now off to another Fiesta. This is the Fiesta Henderson, which started its life as the reserve. It opened in 1998 with a jungle theme and was purchased by Station Casinos or Red Rock Resorts in October of 2000 for $71.8 million. They essentially sold two casinos in Missouri to Ameristar and then acquired the Fiesta from Ameristar. They acquired it at the same time that they acquired the Fiesta Rancho, very close together, and they renamed it to create that brand synergy. This property certainly has a murky future. We know that it's never been the most financially viable property. Sunset Station, which is owned by the same company, is just down the road, and we have no reopening date set for Fiesta Rancho, a property that I've always enjoyed, but a casino that I've never seen very, very busy, and I wonder what will happen here. Will it get sold? Let me know what you think. Now we are at the Rio, and if you pay attention to the channel, you know that my stay there was a bit of a disaster. Check out our MTM Vegas episode where I talk all about it. I recorded it live from my room, but nonetheless, despite having a bad experience, the Rio is now reopened for business. It just reopened about a week ago, and it had sat shuttered all the way since March. Thankfully, it is now open, and I am happy for that, for everybody who works there. Let's take a look around, let's walk around a little bit, see the casino, and then I'll be back with you. Rio, of course, famous for hosting the World Series of Poker. The very small poker room here closed on this day, as was so much. So many of the restaurants, just about everything really closed. Just a couple of things open, including the casino, the hotel, Starbucks, and a little bit else. Now we're going to jump all the way out to Henderson, to Water Street in downtown Henderson, and the very historic El Dorado Casino, which still sits closed since March. The Boyd brothers came in on El Dorado with a bunch of partners, and then within a few years, Sam Boyd had bought 50% ownership for $6,667, and his brother Bill bought a quarter of the casino for $3,000, splitting that other quarter with the other investors. For that reason, it has a ton of history, and it has been around forever.
It also sits right next to the brand new Lifeguard Arena, which is the practice facility for the Henderson Silver Knights. Check out our construction tour to see more of that facility, plus all of the exciting projects happening all around Las Vegas. But you can see the architecture here is very interesting, very old school. And of course, if you watched MTM Vegas or pay attention to the news, this property was sold by Boyd Gaming to DeSimone Gaming, which is a company owned by a Henderson real estate developer who also owns the Railroad Pass Casino, which sits in Henderson just before you go to Boulder City. So this property has an exciting future because I expect they bought it, that they'll reopen it. And uh, it's very old school. If you like old school casinos, old school Vegas, this is a place to visit when it reopens. Happy to uh, get in here and see this garage and to check out all of the happenings in Las Vegas. All of these casinos are still closed, unfortunately. Sad news, hopefully some of them will reopen soon. Let me know what your biggest surprise among the closed casinos is. Which one do you wanna see come back? And if you want some inspiration, check out the construction video because there's tons of new stuff coming while we continue to struggle with this pandemic. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you next time.